initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at Gian Dealman 23. There's a lot I want to say about this movie, so let's not waste any time. Let's just peel apart these cheeks and dive in. This movie I thought had a lot of potential. I really enjoyed the daily chores that Gian was engaging in. But I do have to say, around the midpoint in the film, it just really went off the Wait. rails. Hold it! No! I apologize for interrupting your regularly scheduled programming. But I simply cannot sit by and allow this crazy hippie to tarnish the reputation of my favorite feminist art house movie of all time. You are wrong! Ray! Ray! Sorry, my sweet children. It is not every day that we see such a blasphemous opinion on the internet. Perhaps we can use this as a learning opportunity. It is clear that this crazy hippie is nitpicking and biased. But perhaps I can provide commentary to explain why he is so wrong in every way. Yes, I am the best. Roll clip. It just really went off the rails when they tried to introduce aliens as well as cryptids. I thought it just felt completely out of left field. Jian no! had never cemented herself as a paranormal investigator nor some kind of cryptid hunter. What? And I just don't understand where it came from. She went from just doing trivial chores around the house to engaging in galactic warfare for absolutely no fucking reason. No! I'm sure there's symbolism there and I'm just yes. too much of a Neanderthal to pick up on it because mm -hmm. Gian Dealman's known for very subtle details in her oh, films, yes. but I just didn't see it. Stop! Now I understand that someone as casual as yourself would never pick up on this, but the aliens in this film have a very clear symbolic purpose. When she charges into battle against the 1080 alien army known as the Bruxelles, there is also a separate, deeper, and much more complex battle taking place inside her own mind. The inclusion of aliens in this film was to highlight how alien she felt to the world around her after the unfortunate accident where she overcooked her potatoes. It is after this pivotal moment that she truly accepts her life will never be the same again and she applies in person to become a paranormal investigator. How can you have missed this? Uh, clearly there's something I missed there, and that's my biggest problem with this film. It's just the narrative falls apart. No! I really enjoyed the first couple of arcs in the movie where Jian is establishing her character yes. as one of the best household chores operators in the business. Yes! There is not a single chore around the house that she cannot do to perfection. True. She was cooking. Yes! She was doing exercises on the yoga mat yes. beautifully, definitely getting a big pump in, very defined muscles on Jian, and True. that's another thing she's always been known for, of course. But of course! But it's just after she goes through these chores we see a completely different side of her what? just a bloodthirsty rampaging maniac and no! i just i didn't understand it no 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 it is incredibly obvious that this bloodthirsty rampaging maniac was always a part of her throughout the entire film it is clearly shown here when she's peeling potatoes and we hear her voice over say i wish these potatoes were aliens because i would totally beat them up when she is first contacted by special agent Jack Bauer, she specifically tells him, I have ruined my potatoes and now I must ruin a life. Don't you see? A household's duties and her thirst for vengeance are one and the same. This is further illustrated when she takes one of the alien's rotting brains and transforms it into a lovely meal. This is the film's way of communicating that there is still some hope for her to return to her normal life so long as she maintains her quest for blood lust. It is a film about discovering true balance and inner peace. Uh, duh. Aside from, of course, the narrative, the rest of the movie, it's filmed beautifully. I love the framing, the cinematography. Yes. I believe Hans Zimmer was also doing the score to the movie, so it sounded beautiful. Very but true. It's just the narrative. I can't forgive such uh -uh. outlandish laziness no! and laziness being the wrong word because they clearly put a lot of effort yes. into bringing these to life with a lot of cgi villains aliens monsters and yes. stuff but i just don't see why no! i feel like it was misplaced when gn really could have just done 
more chores. Wow. We love seeing her do chores, but instead she just serious. started fucking fighting things and, and shooting things for no reason. No! Uh, and that's just my biggest complaint. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to give Jeanne, uh, Jeanne Dealman's 23 a 50%. A very very average movie with a lot more potential that I just don't think was realized due to trying to like make it in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or something. I'm really not sure what the turn was about, but I'm going to have to dock a lot of points from it, and it's a real shame. I am truly speechless at what verbal crimes you have just committed. Not only do you have the nerve to give my favorite movie a 50% score, but you even refuse to say the full title of the film. The name of the film is Jean Dillemont, 23, Quai du Commerce, 1080, Bruxelles. It's not that hard. Oh. What's the matter? You gonna cry? What we are now seeing Adam do here is a textbook example of what top criminal psychologists call stretching the ham. Notice how Adam leans forward in his chair before asking Charlie if he's going to cry. This is Adam's clever attempt to assert dominance in the conversation, albeit a rather futile one considering Charlie is just a pre-recorded video. Despite this, Adam spent the next several days screaming obscenities and making verbal threats towards Charlie. This video goes on seamlessly without any cuts for over 91 hours. To this day, no one can explain how Adam is able to do this without eating, sleeping, or going to the bathroom. Throughout this historic display of power and confidence, Adam invents several new intimidation techniques that psychologists would later go on to study for decades. These techniques were so groundbreaking and effective that they eventually became commonly used by UFC fighters in order to psych out their opponents. The UFC later banned fighters from using these techniques because, quote, they present too much of an advantage and are unfair to the opponent. That's you. Adam would later go on to mail this That's video to Charlie you. through his P.O. box alongside six cans Ow. of expired Chef Boyardee. Ow. Charlie's lawyers argued that the expired Ow. food and threatening video placed him under emotional Ow. distress, seeking $10 million in compensatory Ow. damages. With overwhelming video evidence, Bye. Adam was forced to settle the case, paying the defendant Bye. a total of $3 million, alongside the promise that Adam would never use his powers for evil evil ever again. In April of 2021, he posted the following video as an apology to his audience. I, Adam Johansson, hereby announce my resignation as president of yourmovienotgood.com. I sincerely apologize for my wrongdoings, my transgressions, and especially my galactically sized big brain. Namaste, my brethren. Sinek